This is powdered titanium, and I'm going to learn how to turn this powder into this. Kieran, welcome. Nice and where can I find parts that you make on cars like this, as an example? So additive manufacturing is a really good technology for lightweighting. Lightweighting in particular is applicable to hypercars, and this is a really good example of a hypercar. There's lots of additive manufactured parts on a vehicle like this, both in plastics and in metals, particularly titanium. We're going to go inside and have a good look around and learn about how you turn powder into products and how high value items like super yachts, hypercars, truly bespoke products like that Formula One car that may be going around right now into super unbelievable lightweight parts. Let's take a look. Any weldable material can be uh, manufactured in this way. What it allows us to do though, um, which is unique with additive manufacturing, is we can make things much more quickly without any tooling, make things lighter, or we can make really complex parts that you couldn't make any other way. And when you start unlocking those elements of additive manufacturing, then you start to see benefits. In the case of an automotive example, two parts that look identical, one made with traditional process and one made with additive manufacturing. This one is 50% lighter. And we achieve that by being able to make it hollow, like a bone wow. structure. So you're now thinking about geometries and structures that are more organic, more driven by nature and therefore stronger and lighter. This example actually um, is where you can make a direct weight saving on an existing part. If you then go the next level and design a new part that uses additive manufacturing as its main form of design process, then you can make something that's even lighter again. And so that one's another 50% lighter. That's beautiful as well. So where can I expect to find these amazing parts? Well, the benefits of additive manufacturing is you can make premium luxury components um, that look great and perform great, but also a super lightweight. So when you're talking about um, hypercar, for example, a three million pound hypercar, you would expect to find additive manufacturing as part of the manufacturing process to achieve the ultra low weights that are needed to achieve the performance that is required. And how much of my three million plus hypercar would be made that way in percentage terms? Well, I can give you some examples. We've worked on two hypercar projects recently. Both of those cars have got in excess of 300 parts per car that wow. are made using this technology. 300 parts? At least 300 At parts. least 300 yeah. parts in my hypercar. Using metals and also plastics and polymers. But the metals is the exciting one in terms of performance benefits. And it's not just used for performance benefits of light weighting or um, increasing um, the speed to market because you can actually make things without tooling. You can also make things that are super complex. But actually, you can also use the technology to make things that are aesthetic and add other value to the vehicle. So if I wanted to be creative and start designing my own bespoke lighting for my 50 million mansion, I could come to you and say, Kieran, design me some amazing lights. And not only can we manufacture using this process that makes it, you know, because you're doing low volumes and, and being bespoke, but you can then start changing the design and you can start having things like this bottle opener that I showed you and gave you one earlier, where the structure is not restrained to normal manufacturing process. So you can see it's quite organic in the way that the, uh, the, the structure is developed, but extremely light. Amazing. These will be available to buy. We'll come up with something in the description <laughs> below and uh, work something out with Kieran. If you're running a business and you want your own bespoke gift for your clients, we'll work something out. So that there are unbelievable things that can be achieved with the new technology. Yep. The, the challenge, I guess, with additive manufacturing at the moment is it's perceived to be expensive. Now it is. Parts made using additive manufacturing typically are more expensive than parts made with traditional manufacturing process. But that's only if you're comparing like for like. If you're solving a problem like lead time or um, light weighting or reducing investment in tooling cost or making something that's super complex, you can't actually compare it with another component. So actually the cost is a very reasonable and you get, it's about value then rather than, um, rather than actual piece price. That's an example of um, being able to demonstrate some of the visual benefits of additive manufacturing. So you can create these wonderful lattice structures, but by looking at it, you think, oh, hang on, that's incredibly flimsy. Is it strong enough? It's very strong. That's made in a material called scalmaloy. It's very James yeah. Bond, doesn't it? Yeah, what's scalmaloy? It's an aluminium alloy developed by Airbus, uh, specifically for, for um, aircraft, airframes. So very light, very high strength modulus, um, and it's one of the materials that's approved for use in Formula One. So this, from my understanding, was from a sculpture that the artist created and you made a Correct. number of them as gifts. Yep. He would have sculpted these um, wow. pieces of art full size 
in clay, and then it would become a bronze. And then we scaled it down, 3D print it into Tonium. And if you look closely, you can see scaled down thumbprints from the artist's original model that they were building. So if some of my clients have got artists that want to replicate their sculptures, there's a way to do it now, phenomenal. You could do a 3D print scan and a print of your dog or your favorite pet. Now that's a good idea, <laughs> I like that idea. We can do some 3D print. Or your children dogs. perhaps, I don't know. No, that's too far. We've got three machines at yeah. the moment. So if you look in there, there's just a build plate. And the next thing that happens after the build plate goes in and all of the CAD data, which is the software that's sent to the machines by the engineers. So, so, so we have the plate. Plate goes in. Engineers the engineers send the data, data remotely. Powder. Powder, go, powder is managed inside the machine and it's fully encapsulated in, and, and recirculating. There's no waste. And then when the machine starts, it puts a layer of powder down and then the lasers, and there's four lasers in these machines, melt the powder and create it into a solid. And it does that layer by layer. So if you take any 3D object and cut it into 2D slices, you imagine drawing that 2D pattern and then on paper and stacking it up. That's how 3D printing works. And that's the additive layer manufacturing. So you can see on the screen here, there's some, there's some patterns. Those are the 2D sections that I talked about. Yeah, yeah. And then if you look in the machine, it's currently laying down a layer of powder, 30 microns thick. Oh, wow. Once the powder is laid down, the lasers fire. So that's the powder. So that's the powder being melted by the, la by yeah, the laser. The powder goes down. So there's four lasers. Yeah. Uh, these machines are good because of the four lasers ha have a high productivity, so we can get more throughput through the machines. It will keep going layer by layer, those 30 microns, and many of these builds are um, multiples of 24 hours. So when you say 30 microns, what is that in terms of a measurement? Thickness of a bit of paper. So each layer is the thickness of a piece of paper. Yeah, and that's why you can see when the parts come out, they're very high resolution. Our vision is to have a digital manufacturing process end to end as much as possible. And the real benefit to um, manufacturing in the future is that we can scale this up by building other factories like the DMC anywhere in the world using the same protocols. And actually we don't need to send you the parts and put them on an aeroplane or boat and carbon footprint. I can send you the digital file and make it locally. Incredible. So we're now talking about portable data, not portable parts. I can see why they call you the Elon Musk of the UK. Parts will come out of the, the printer, they go into heat treatment, and that's because there's a lot of stress created in these parts from the heat in the cycles that happens in there. Bringing the finished build up to a temperature and then allowing it to cool in a controlled way okay. so that you're not getting residual stresses that cause cracking and breakages. So this is a completed aluminium build. That was built layer by layer. Layer by layer, that's what you saw happening just now. Wow. All the powder gets removed before this comes out of the machine. Yeah. And all that powder that didn't get melted gets filtered and reused. So there's very, very little waste in this process. You only use the material you need to make the parts and you only use the energy you need. There's very little waste, as I say. There are some build support structures, so you'll see these yeah. sort of components here that they'll get broken off. So these are build, build support. They're the build supports because this overhang, yeah. this would need some support, so it also anchors it back to the bed. The other thing that you'll notice is that every build we do has these cubes yeah. and there's four of them. And you won't notice without me pointing it out, but each of them has a different number of corners missing. Right. So that one's got four corners missing, this one's got one. So that's laser number four that is doing a test sample. Okay. And we collect all those test samples for each laser on every build, and that gives us our predictive maintenance and our, our machine learning. We also do tensile test bars for every build. So that's the, we pull the parts, these parts in half, and that tells us what the strength is and mechanical properties. So we're able to ensure for our customers yeah. that the parts they are uh, receiving from the DMC or any DMC um, subsidiary process would be to the mechanical properties they need. So once they come out of that machine and they've been through this process, you'll notice they're all welded to the bed. They go into the machines behind you. This is a wire cutter and the wire cutter spark erodes. So it's using electricity to erode through the parts gives a really clean cut and then you end up with a plate that's ready to go again after it's been skimmed on the machine. So you can see the witness of all the parts that were on there before and yeah. you can see how clean and nice the cut is. Yeah. And then we CNC machine, we skim it, just skim the top off. Wow. And bring it back to a, a virgin plate that we can then put back in the machine. So again, we're creating very little waste. So what I like about this particular area here is Firstly, there is a human in it. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hi, hey John. Who is a human? <laughs> He's human. <laughs> and even though all these parts have been made 24 hours a day, seven days a week, lights out in an autonomous factory environment, yeah. many parts still have a human touch at the end to give the final finishing requirements. 
whether it's polishing or even just build, removing these build supports. So I, these are the build support structures I told you about. I'll do John a favour and break those off. You see, that's how easy they come off. You can do, you can do it on those ones. The first breakage of a... There you go. So they're designed to peel away. I hope I was supposed to do that. Actually. No, that's part of the part. Oh, well, that... <laughs> but yeah, you can see how easy they are to break off. And so, wow. again, we, we're using our, our design skills upstairs as much as possible to avoid any complex machining needing to be done and just basic processes. So most parts that have been through the manufacturing process because they are quality critical, because they're for performance vehicles, for example, hypercars. You know, if you've got a suspension mounting in a hypercar, you don't want it to fail. You don't want it to fail on your customer. Uh, so everything goes through inspection. You know, these parts are going into aircraft and hypercars and super yachts. Uh, so it's, you know, they have to be, these are very high quality, high value precision parts. So that's metals on that side, this side's polymers. Polymers basically means plastics. All these technologies work roughly the same, which is you're building something layer by layer, okay? And that's why it's called AL, ALM, Additive Layer Manufacturing. But there are many, many different ways of doing it. You've got lasers, melting powder, metal powder. You've got extruders, depositing thermoplastic materials. You've got lasers, Melt, uh, curing epoxy resins, there's a whole range. So the first one I'll show you, this material in here, we use a lot for making wind tunnel models for Formula One. So all the actual scale models, which are up to 60%. This is a ceramic loaded epoxy resin. It works very similarly to the one I've just showed you. It uses a laser to draw a process and cure the resin and creates the resin into a solid. And then when the part's finished, they all come out. You've still got a load of liquid resin that can be reused and you can turn some parts into solid. But all of these different technologies and materials have different applications. So there's not a one size fits all solution. So again, the engineering led approach that we have upstairs is about talking to our customers before they even know what their problem is, understand the challenges, and then work out what the best technology and the best material is for them to solve that problem. Usually we find that people come to us already with some idea of what they want to make. Once you understand what's possible, you realize that most of the things in life currently are restricted by what was possible before not what's possible now. There's a lot of parts that are being made now in rocket engines, for example, that are really complex, couldn't be made any other way. So these, these machines are probably the closest to traditional 3D printing technologies that most people will be familiar with. So those are the audience that are familiar with MakerBots uh, and home making devices. They are a sort of a, a desktop footprint 3D printer that you can make anything of this sort of size on. Very useful for, for home use. These are industrial scaled up versions. So we're not just making desktop, this is a meter cubed we can build on here. And actually on these two machines, we've actually printed an entire show car for the sole purpose of being able to market and sell your concept car or your model at a motor show or a private event and create basically a big airfix kit so, so we if I wanted to build that cut. car in that machine, it's possible. And you can treat the material like any other. You can paint it, and to all, all intents and purposes, it's a, it's a full-size show So car. guys, if you've got cash to burn and you want to create your own car, then it's possible. You can have one on your, on your yacht, couldn't you? Wow. So, with so many hypercars and supercars all around the world, it's just incredible to know what you don't know. Yeah, no idea there's so much technology that goes into making something as high performance as this. That's incredible. And uh, what have you got well, there? I have a titanium bottle opener. It's probably the most high performance bottle opener you'll ever have. This is probably the best gift I have had. And I will treasure and open a few bottles. And always, thank you so, so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. Comment below, it means so much. And if you have any questions or you have any products you want to create, then we'll be very glad to introduce you to DMC.